Hello YouTube, welcome back to this week's video. This is 2E0IQJ. So we've got here a Texan PL660 FM medium wave, long wave, short wave and air band receiver. Now I did review this a few weeks back and people were saying what a great radio it is. Yes, it's a brilliant little radio. Uh, FM sounds brilliant, receives okay, it receives brilliantly on um, short wave and someone put in the comments that it's XYL's nicked it as a kitchen radio. Want to get that back son? I'll tell you that now. So in this week's video we're going to make ourselves a portable shortwave antenna for this radio. You can just plug it inside, clip it onto a tree branch or onto the end of a fence, and it becomes a portable shortwave antenna. Now, I've done a video before where I typed some speaker wire together that I got out of the uh, hardware store. Um, I used it on a DX394. That's had quite a few views. I've seen that one. I'll link that in the end card below. Watch that one as well after you've seen this video. So, what we need for our antenna is you're going to want a length of wire. Now I'm not sure whether this is 10 metres or 5 metres, I don't know how long it is, I've had it lying about for a while now. And on the end there you can see I've stripped the two ends so we can reveal the inside. Makes it a bit easier to solder. You're going to want some solder or solder as the Americans pronounce it. Obviously you're going to want a solder arm and we're going to get ourselves some jack plugs. That's what I was waiting for uh, to arrive on eBay. This is a stereo jack plug. I think you've got about eight or nine of these for like a fiver. On the other end of the wire, we're going to use a crocodile clip. That's just optional, but it means if you want to use it, you can just uh, easily clip it onto a tree branch, something like that. So I'll reposition the camera, and then we'll go ahead and uh, build our antenna. Let's get right to it. Okay, so the iron's warmed up. I've taken the black plastic part off, and the jack plug is placed in the helping hands. Now there's three points on this jack plug. The one facing towards me is for the tip. The one facing towards you is the middle bit and the bottom part is the ground. We want to solder to the tip so I'm going to solder to the part nearest me. So first of all we're going to clean the iron up. And I'm just going to add some solder to the tip and then we can add the cable and then uh, close the connection up and we should be done. Now my connection is a bit loose in this helping hand so let's tighten up a bit. There we go. Let's try, let's try again. Okay, not the best. Hopefully it'll do. Now what I need to do is place the black plastic part I was just there onto the cable, now you want to do that first otherwise you'd have to go all the way around the rest of the cable just to put the connection on then we need to solder that wire to the part we've just done so we just uh, tighten the connection up there we go, now I'm going to solder the wire on hopefully it'll stick maybe I want to bend it in half, make it a bit smaller the wire Right, so that's on. Not the best of jobs, but it's what I can do when I'm on the camera. No effort to cool down a bit, and I'll add the surround. And we should be good to go with our portable shortwave antenna. Okay, so the black plastic parts come on, and looks like an okay connection. What I'm going to do is what I've done here to the crocodile clip is add some heat shrink to it, so I'll do that at some point. And first of all, I just want to check the connection's working, check I've sold it to the right plug, that sort of stuff. So I've got my DVM and it's in continuity mode. So let's check it. We've got a beep. So I'm gonna try it on the crocodile clip. Now the crocodile clip is optional, it just helps you clip it up. You don't have to use that, you can just uh, tie it up any way you want. But we'll try it on the outside or the, the ground. Nope. The right jack, no end. Lovely. So hopefully this connection is gonna work. So let's go outside and uh, test it, see if we can hear any shortwave stations. Bit of luck, we should be hearing loads off this uh, random piece of wire. Okay, so I've plugged in the uh, jack plug to the side of the radio, and on the side of the radio it's switched to DX, and I've threw the cable out all the way across here, all the way up here, up here, up here, up here, 
and I've plugged, uh, connected it to a tree branch just here. Just clips it on. Now I could have gone a bit higher, focus. There you go, now I could have gone a bit higher up there somewhere in the tree branches, but I didn't bother. I just clipped it on there for the purposes of this of the video. Let's see if this thing's going to receive. Hopefully it will do. Okay, so the radio's on. We're on lower sideband. Let's change it to upper sideband. Let's try 27 305. Right, yeah. Um, Decimal right, activity. Now let's try um, 40 meters. We're we'll getting activity on 40 meters. Laser and water activity. FT8. So there we go, we just built ourselves a very inexpensive shortwave receiving antenna for the Texan PL660 and on the end we used a jack plug. Now if your receiver's got a PL259 plug, N-type or BNC sort of plug, you can put that plug on the end, solder some wire onto it and then you'll be good to go and make your own shortwave antenna. Now I've done one before where I had a piece of coats lying around the shack and I tied some speaker wire together throughout the window and that worked very well as a shortwave receiving antenna. And that was uh, nice cheap as well. I think the, the cable was about six pound odd. The tape was about a pound. And the piece of coats I had was in, in a shack was just lying around doing nothing. Now what I've done to this antenna is I've added some heat shrink to the end of there. To make the cable a little bit more secure. I've added some heat shrink to the end of there. Made that a bit more secure. So give this antenna a go. See how you get on. Now my soldering skills suck. And... Uh, and Q's recommendation, I've got a load of old broken boards that I haven't thrown yet. Now I've got a desolder pump and I want to try and get rid of some of the components off the board to practice my solder skills a bit better. If I damage the board, I ain't going to make no difference because they're probably broken anyway. Probably come out of an old Freeview box or something, an old satellite receiver or something like that. And I want to use them to practice my solder skills. Anyhow, if you found the video of some use, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, that other button seems to work too. But as always, thank you very much for watching. This is 2E0 IQJ73.